So, everybody, you're listening to Big Blend Radio. We're airing live from the award-winning Hummingbird Inn in downtown Easton, Maryland. And we're in the turret. We're very excited about being in the turret because we've never done a radio show from a turret before. And I feel like I could play Rapunzel. I need to grow my hair Mm -hmm. longer and stick my hair out there. But we did stick Priscilla, our little pink sock monkey, out there uh, this morning. (laughs) And she likes to hang out in the turret. So, she mm-hmm. needs to grow her hair, too. But very excited. We have innkeeper and owner and chef Eric Levinson joining us to talk about the inn and also what there is to see and do in eastern uh, Maryland because there's a lot. It is beautiful, historic, and charming. So uh, everyone go to hummingbirdineaston.com. So, Eric, how are you? Hi there. I'm doing great. Thank you. Hey, Hello. good. So you're in the kitchen right now, right? <laughs> Yes, I'm in the kitchen where I do find myself spending a great deal of my time here, but fortunately, I love it. That's good, because you're really good at breakfast. Let me tell you, the Mm, breakfast, uh, the Bellinis this morning, I'm serious, the Bellinis, the Mm -hmm. egg bakes. Nancy had the creme brulee French toast. Oh, it's so good. Wow. I'm so glad you guys enjoyed that. Oh, that was, I was just like, wow, what a difference. Mm -hmm. Man, that's good. That's really, hmm. She had rum in there. That was that was definitely something when I was looking to open a a bed and breakfast. I knew that I wanted to make sure that breakfast was something really special. It's always been one of my favorite meals as a kid growing up and Mm. having had the opportunity to travel around the world and host people from around the world. um, I've always enjoyed learning about all the different international types of breakfasts and things to uh, make things a little interesting and a little more uh, unique here so that, um, you can kind of get a chance to break out of just some cold cereal and uh, toast uh, yeah. when you come here and try something international for a change. Yeah, I was on your Instagram page today, and I see that you're introducing international breakfast dishes. And we also got a sneak peek of what's coming up tomorrow, which includes your candied Guinness bacon, Canadian bacon. What? Wait, wait mm. I'm saying it wrong, but talk about this bacon. But these international breakfast dishes, there were some that I've never seen them. I can't even pronounce them. But you're like, yeah, so, to yeah, so tomorrow, tomorrow we're doing the, um, it's called an Erkuchen, which is a Austrian egg bake or egg cake. Um, and it's uh, a really delicious, full flavor uh, egg dish that's very moist with um, some cheese and soft breadcrumbs and leeks and onions. And um, mm. it, it's a really beautiful dish. Um, but yeah, tomorrow is um, a special day because we do um, this once in a while. It's our house specialty. It's our Guinness candied Chesapeake bacon, which is a thick cut uh, pork bacon that is uh, candied, um, baked o- baked during the day um, and candied overnight with a uh, syrup made of Guinness beer, brown sugar, and Old Bay seasoning. And if you live on the eastern shore here, everybody knows Old Bay. It's a it is the Eastern Shore, so you can't get away from it. And we try not to put it in everything, but once in a while, we can figure out a way to sneak it in there. Oh, cool! Man. I can't wait. Yay, I know this bacon. is. I know Nancy's all like bacon, <laughs> bacon. Yeah, it, it, I think it's awesome that you also served mimosas and bellinis, and your bellini was so refreshing and smooth. I was like, wow, this is like such an amazing. I mean, just a way to wake up. You have the rise well, up coffee, yeah. which is local, and then that. I'm like, woohoo. <laughs> It's it's got a nice little uh, refreshing, uh, like you said, a nice little way to wake up with something mm. refreshing, not overpowering. Um, and I and and we changed it up with the with um, using our our Bellini is with pear nectar and some cranberry juice, and the combination is nice. And the way it kind of blends together, it mm. kind of looks like how the colors and the feathers um, sort of blend together on a hummingbird. So we thought it was a, a fitting drink for the end. Oh, mm-hmm. you said blend twice. You get a yes, reward. but you win. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> but just, and I love the Hummingbird Inn. I love the name and also the mm. legend. And I encourage people to go to your website again, hummingbirdineaston.com, to read the legend of the hummingbird. And, you know, we, you know, lived in the Southwest where there were tons of hummingbirds. And it's just, it's, they're special. and They're special in history. They're special spiritually. Mm. They're just special birds and I know it's a special story for you and, and um, I think that's I just love the hummingbird being around mm-hmm. us you know um, there's hummingbirds throughout the inn uh, hanging little glass hummingbirds and I remember Nancy and I actually watching a gentleman who was on the Ed Sullivan show many years ago 
and he would as a glass blower and he did all these glass blowing of hummingbirds and mm-hmm. we got to watch him and uh, that was super cool so I love that part of of the end story but the end story kind of starts way back when right it's a Queen Anne Victorian and again I get to be in the turret I'm just going to keep saying that over and over today I'm in the <laughs> turret uh, but this this started way back when um, you know so this was someone's home it, it's been a med- like a doctor's office right but it's all renovated hmm. everybody um, so you get all the modern amenities like internet so we can air shows, <laughs> radio shows from here and you can do all your down, you know, streaming of everything. Um, and, uh, but yeah, give us a little history of, of this beautiful inn. So the house was built in, uh, 1887. Um, it was built for the daughter of one of the wealthiest men in the County who owned a canning cannery company. Cause back then canning was a big thing. And he built two houses on this block, one for two, each of his daughters. This is the only one uh, remaining standing. The other house was uh, was taken down, um, and uh, his house is still remaining. And he owned this whole block, and it was a very wealthy neighborhood back then. And this house was very unique and uh, respected in the neighborhood because it was one of the first houses to – Um, not only have an outdoor kitchen, but uh, eventually an indoor kitchen, which back in the 1800s was a very unique thing to have. Um, So it has always been a very uh, striking-looking house um, with a turret and Mm -hmm. the wraparound porch, and um, it has endured a lot over the years and been through a lot over the years. And um, when I first saw it, I just also fell in love with the house. It has such a unique look and design and all the different rooms and um, it just has a warmth and uh, a real, mm. it's just a, a great place and such a functional house to be able to do so many things here. It, and that porch, Nancy, I love the porch, the porch. Yeah. I, well, I would live on the porch. I really would live on the per, a porch. It's just so cool. Mm-hmm. And you know, yeah. The double, about, the double yeah. deep porch. Yeah. Yeah, the double wide porch is really nice because it's a great place to hang out and and congregate and meet other guests, you know. And back in the back in those days, that was where people socialized because they didn't obviously have TV and internet and cell phones and so you 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 met your neighbors and you hung out on the porches because that was there was no air conditioning, so it was cool and you could get a nice breeze. And the double porch, the double wide porch section, um, is just a great place. I like to do what I call porch time in the evenings, which is mm. to get out there and we have music out there and we can bring out wine and just sit and meet with people and talk and make friends and uh, yeah. the neighbors will come by. It's just a, it's a really nice, different way to uh, connect with people. I'd love oh. that. But right now it's decorated in style for Halloween, yeah, and it is, is really spectacular. Awesome. So tell tell everybody about this because the one thing that's really unique about what you're doing with the inn is it's not just for visitors coming to Easton and to experience the inn because the inn, I mean, you can park your car and just go to town, literally steps away. Right. Um, but this is something you're also, you know, a destination for the community for parties and dinner theater, <laughs> mystery, was it mystery, murder mystery dinner and, yeah, uh, cool. and and Halloween and all kinds of good things. Yeah, well, when I when I decided, you know, I knew I wanted to open a bed and breakfast. And, and one of the things that I've always enjoyed doing besides the bed and breakfast part is I love entertaining and have and being at events and things like that. So I really looked for a property that could support both the bed and breakfast side of things as well as events. And this particular house here in the historic district has either the one of them or the largest uh, property in the downtown area. So we are able to do all sorts of events uh, from small events up to events that can host up to 150 people, whether it's weddings, receptions, you know, private events and things like that. But I've always, you know, always enjoyed being and and my desire is to be part of a community. And since the house is in a rent- residential neighborhood, is to make sure that the neighbors and the rest of the locals don't feel like this is just a separatist environment here and it's just mm-hmm. for out-of-town people to take advantage of. So we do a number of uh, public events throughout the year, 
So um, like example, the Halloween thing that you mentioned. So we do an annual Halloween party. It's on the porch. So it's outside and it's a theme every year. This year we've gone with the theme mask up since we thought that was fitting for the for this season mm. and the, what we're all going through. Um, yeah, and uh, so everybody dresses up and we hand out candy to the kids and there's music and drinks and food. And it's just a good time just for locals to come um, and, and hang out and, and have a good time. And, and then we also do, as you mentioned, we do an annual murder mystery weekend, um, which also has a theme. It's a two day event um, for 16 people and, um, it's the perfect house, I think, for the live version of Clue. I mean, you couldn't pick a better <laughs> house with a parlor and a kitchen and a dining room and everything else, you know. So mm. um, that's a fun event. And then in the summers, we do a all-you-can-eat crab feast because we are on the eastern shore and you can't get away from crabs. Um, and uh, it's a big event with live music and um, a bar, and it's also a benefit for a local organization called the Talbot Interfaith Shelter, uh, which helps people in need with shelter, uh, with homes, with skilled training, etc. Um, so we help the community that way. We help make sure that people feel connected to the inn um, and that they're a part of part of the inn here, and that it's just not something in the neighborhood that they really don't understand. Well, I, I think it's also important that. because. You, you know, when you travel, part of the authentic travel experience is, number one, a bed and breakfast really provides that. It's unique. It's authentic. Innkeepers know their area like the back of their hand, um, you know, and it, there's just a relaxed feeling. And here, I just love that you can just walk out and start, you mm-hmm. know, walking through the neighborhood. We went and did a little bit of the uh, rails to trails. Um, you have this wonderful mm-hmm. pathway, you know, just what steps away, literally. And it's where this yep. Rails to Rails um, organization does this amazing job of turning old railroads into trails across the country, and you have it right behind you. And we did that today, which was really beautiful and shaded, and the old train depot is there. But I think when you have, um, when you bring the community into the B&B, you're also allowing your guests to get to know the locals as well. So just the fact that they can walk downtown from here, they're going to get to know the locals. But the fact that you you merge them together. You're blending them. We're using mm-hmm. that word again. <laughs> but I, yeah. I, I, I like well, the, only, the only, yeah. Go ahead. The only thing I will caution you is that um, people have come here and had that experience and then met the locals. And I've already had four couples that came here as guests and now are full-time residents. So just be warned. It will it will draw you in. It is an amazing little town and so much to offer here, um, not only just here at the inn, but also within the town and the surrounding okay. towns. See, well, and that's cool. And I also think, you know, um, when you're connected to everyone around you, um, that it's there are times, especially coming up to holidays, where, you know, families are traveling to come and see their family here, and maybe they just really – don't have the extra room and they say Mm -hmm. I know this is a great place to stay I know the person you know so I feel like being connected to your town is really a good thing you know yeah absolutely it it works both ways for both for all of us absolutely uh, yeah and, and people enjoy the energy that we have here even if it's an event they're not attending if it's a private event and you know, like the weddings and things, and they hear the music, or even when we did the craft mm-hmm. feast, and the whole neighborhood can hear the live music. And the, and I'd walk around with my dog, True, who, um, you Aww. know, and people would say, oh, my God, we love the music. It was great. Mm-hmm. And it was, we just mm-hmm. sat in our, on our porch and listened, you know. Mm-hmm. So they all feel like they're, they're actually here and, and part of it and enjoying it. And very supportive group of neighbors and, and community here for the inn, which has been just outstanding. I That's love so the cool. music. When you get mm-hmm. here, you park the car and you hear music as you're walking up and you have music at breakfast and, you know, it's just like, oh, wow. Okay. So if you've had a, if you're coming from DC or Philly, you may want to hear nice music by the time you get here. But we had a beautiful, beautiful drive here. Uh, we drove mm. from uh, 
Lancaster County, Ephrata, um, Pennsylvania, through Amish country and through farmlands. And just, oh my gosh, yesterday we drove through there and checked in, saw all the different rooms in the inn, mm. which uh, I want to talk about that because you've named them all after all the historic towns here. And But we also went to Blackwater uh, National Wildlife Refuge. And I'm telling you, if you're oh, into gosh. bird watching or just That's really iconic scenery of the, of the mm. Northeast, um, you are northeast. We, I mean, this we're so new here. It, it is northeast, but you are on the <laughs> eastern shore. But it's not the Jersey Where Shore, we? right? <laughs> Where are it's we? The eastern. It is. We. It is the eastern shore. And if you're going to be technical, we are in the south because Maryland is below the Mason-Dixon line. Uh, but we oh. call it mid Mid Atlantic is what we really call this region. Hmm. Okay. Okay. The yeah, I've heard that. Actually, our national park passbook says we're in the Mid Atlantic. Um, when it comes to the locality, I mean, it's just so beautiful getting here. Um, most of your guests, you know, you, you've got to get them from all the major cities because you're close to It doesn't feel like you're close to major cities whatsoever, but you're not that far from D.C. and Philly and, and those areas. Right. Yeah, we, we get a lot of people from from Jersey down to New York, Jersey, down to um, North Carolina and everything, mm-hmm. the Virginias and everything in between. Um, are, are are probably our biggest population, and more so lately because of the travel issues uh, these days. But um, we do get people from all over the world. And one of the things that I did when I moved here, um, and uh, it's not as apparent right now because of the decorations out front, but um, I put flagpoles, four flagpoles up on the house, and I put a flag up for each of my guests when they uh, have books. So when they arrive, their state flag or country flag is oh. out there flying. And it kind of just a cool. little bit of a connection. Some people recognize, some people don't. Um, and then um, what I will do is at the end when they check out is we'll take a picture of them. And in our guest parlor, we have a, rot- uh, a video screen and picture of all the guests and their flags. And it's, I call it my family album of all, cool. my, all my guests that are here. But um from that, I've also been able to kind of get a sense of where people are coming from, and we have uh, 29 states so far and nine countries. Um, wow, so wow. I think we're doing pretty well for our third yeah. here. Well, this is interesting, too, because That's you're a world cool. traveler. I know you come from an IT background, and that you know mm-hmm. got, took you around the world. Is it 70 countries? Am I right on that? Was it 70? Almost, yep, just about 70 countries now, yeah. Wow, and you have a mask collection. Speaking of masks for Halloween, uh, you have I a mask that. collection. I mean, the the I decor in here is so awesome, um, and I love the art. You, oh my God, I love the art. Um, but traveling the world like you have, did, do you think that helped prepare you to be an innkeeper? And then um, also, you know, having all those experiences, are you happy here in Easton? Does is you know, did you look at everywhere you've been and gone? you know, I want this kind of community, that kind of destination, or, you know, did that influence your yeah. decision to buy here? Absolutely. I mean, the traveling really was a big part of getting my interest in doing something like this, you know, and while I traveled and stayed in hotels when it was a business trip, but I also had the opportunity to stay in smaller venues and private homes and B and B's and hostels and stuff. So kind of got the whole experience from that. And Mm -hmm. after being um, traveling for so many years and having so many experiences in hospitality from the consumer side, I think it really helped me kind of understand what a traveler is looking for when they, when they come to a place and what their expectations are. Um, And I doing everything I can to try to meet those here. And that was a big part of when I was looking for a location was finding something that really could meet the traveler. And as a business person traveling by myself, I did an enormous amount of single traveling as a single person. And Mm -hmm. it's even more important than to feel like you're not just going to get trapped in your little room because there's nothing to do and, and you're just not uncom- you're just uncomfortable going out. And so trying to make everybody feel like there's lots to do. You don't even have to go off the property sometimes to do things. You could just walk downstairs and there's porch mm-hmm. time or, or a party or something. We like porch and time. For somebody by them- <laughs> yeah, we love porch time. We love porch time. And for somebody by themselves or, or, with your, or with your travel partner, I mean, it's just nice to have that. So that was really – 
a big factor in what I was looking for. And mm -hmm. even though I've lived in several different places, I grew up on the Eastern shore and being by the water. And I mm -hmm. actually didn't look specifically in Easton when I was looking, I looked all over the country and it's just mm -hmm. ironic that everything that I was looking for in a bed and breakfast in terms of location, number of rooms, style of house, community, um, all of that really, it, every, every box was checked when I found this house here in East. Yeah, That's amazing. I, I love that. When when we started our magazine so many years ago, the, the impetus to start a magazine was, well, I was living in Africa and Lisa, of course, was there. And all I kept hearing from people was there was nothing to do. And I'm like, <laughs> what? What? <laughs> What are you talking about? How can you even say that? I mean, and then I found um, in this one place, there was this huge globe of the world, this huge sculpture on this man's farm that people in town didn't even know was there. And I, I got lost. And I all of a sudden, here's this sculpture, and I'm like on this man's farm. And it, I'm like, 10 minutes down the road, the city didn't know it was there. I'm like, okay, you guys really need some <laughs> education here. So that's how we started the magazine was the, from people saying there's nothing to do because yeah. there's always well, something to do. There, Yeah. And in some places it's a little more effort than others, but yeah. you know, as I said before, I mean, my, my entire adult life, I've always lived in large cities in Manhattan and Toronto and Chicago mm -hmm. and, and um, and so my friends and family know me as the city guy. And so when I said I was moving to Easton, they're <laughs> like, oh, my God, how are you going to survive in this tiny mm. little town? And what is amazing here about Easton is that, especially for somebody from my um, living background, um, the focus on culture and um and entertainment and mm. exquisite food and high level cuisines and and everything here in Easton it's it's almost has the same energy as a city but on the small footprint of a small town and the niceties that you get along with that with the mm. community the sense of community and friendship and the friendliness with everybody and you know so it really is the best of both worlds and mm. and, and the town really makes an effort to do things, you know, for everybody here. We have festi huge festivals all year long that are art, music, um, wildlife, uh, and then uh, and food festivals. And then um, we have a theater downtown that, you know, is just starting now to fortunately be able to come back a little bit. But normally they have live uh, concerts every single weekend throughout the year. Cool. Um, they have the town does a free a uh, concert every month, every summer, um, with different you know genres. It can be swing or jazz or Motown, and it's cool. all free. And everybody in the town comes out, and the guests and visitors, and people are dancing in the streets and having drinks, cool. and sitting and just enjoying. And it's just an um, it's it's a it's the town focuses on being together, having a good time, just being friends and just enjoying each other. And that's a really nice change from having lived in such big cities where you don't really get that. Mm, yeah, for sure. Exactly. I also mm. I want to stress that um, it is uh, home to well, the legacy of Frederick Douglass. And you even have a Frederick mm -hmm. Douglass Day. Um, and I love this. You have a statue of him over at mm -hmm. the county courthouse we went to. It's like, oh, my gosh, we have to go there. And um, there's interesting history here about the Talbot mm -hmm. brothers and this whole thing about stopping the British and like rising up saying, you're not going to close our bay, our Boston Harbor, yeah. you're not going to do this. <laughs> we have some, like, hell no. <laughs> so there's all this history here. And, of and, course, we, and we have the Chesapeake strong. Chesapeake Bay. Go ahead. Yeah, and the strong Harriet Tubman connection. Yes. Too. We saw yeah. that today when we were walking around and driving around. That, um, and we've known about Harriet Tubman for years. But now oh, yeah. she's alive here. Yeah. You know, yeah. We haven't really seen so much about her in other other states. And here all of a sudden there's murals and there she is. I'm like, oh, cool. 
We've done so many yeah, radio shows yeah. focusing on her, and, and I remember mm-hmm. even the trail being formed, and then it's like something, oh, my gosh, we're here. It's like everything yeah. as we were driving into town, we're like, oh, my gosh, this is here. We've done this, but we, we've never seen it. You know, the Chesapeake yeah. Bay is mm-hmm. such a historic thing. I mean, it's like, oh, uh, yeah. you know, Admiral Nelson and, you know, all these people that created this, er- not created the area, right, but documented and navigated it. And, I mean, you've got such rich history, but then you've got water, beautiful mm-hmm. water so all your rooms i'm getting back to that one question that i'm i didn't forget mm-hmm. right it's not mm-hmm. porch time yet <laughs> but um glad you're in rooms, control yeah, yes i'm good yes, I, I'm, in, I'm a perfectionist here right <laughs> but, uh, our next guest will solve that but um you know, all your rooms are named after the town. So give us a little bit of insight on the rooms because they're so tasteful. Like we're, we're we are. I can't pronounce the name because I'm. I'll you're, go you the, are okay. So you're you're in the Tillman Island room. Okay, this mm-hmm. is Tillman. Um, okay. And um and the room names. Um, it was an interesting process to do, and some of the significance of the names of the rooms. Um particularly the Tillman Island room, as well as the one across from you, which is the Crisfield room. Um, but um, the Tillman Island room got its name because Tillman Island is is way out on the point here, and it's right on the in the bay. It's, mm. it's very remote. Um, it's very quaint and quiet and peaceful and restful. Um, and I kind of thought, you know, being up there on the third floor and having such a big space, but not, you know, but the turret and everything, it just seemed like that was the, the fitting name for that room. Um, the room across from you is the Crisfield room. And one of the things I think you guys probably have seen and noticed um, as you've looked around inside the inn is that you had mentioned the art and everything is that mm-hmm. I have never been and never will be a conformist. So while this is a Victorian home, it's a big mixture of styles throughout the house. Mm -hmm. Um, There's a collection of different art styles, furniture styles, things like that. And of the six rooms, we have five which are Victorian styles, similar to the style that you're in. Um, And then the room across from you um, is the Crisfield room. And that is our only contemporary room, which is a very large bright room mm. but it has very calm low scandinavian zen like feeling furniture mm-hmm. in there it's really designed to just be calm and relaxing and um and it's so different from all of the other rooms and there's a funny story mm. i'll tell you quickly about the name of that room so i was talking to one of the people in the town about the names of the rooms and they were asking about the inn and and I mentioned the Crisfield room, and they thought they said Crisfield. That's kind of a funny thing that you picked that town because most of the towns are. That's not one of the very common towns that people go and visit here. And um, you know, St. Michael's, we have the Cambridge room, Easton room, of course, the Oxford room. These are the close towns nearby. And he said, you know, there's an interesting story about the Crisfield room because back in the day towns were recognized in terms of their standing in the community and the other towns by the number of churches that Mm. they had. Mm -hmm. And the Crisfield room did not get that distinction, but it did have a different distinction because of all the towns and all the area, the Crisfield town of Crisfield had the most brothels. So it was the most unique (laughs) of all that and different from all the towns. And I'm like, well, how fitting is that? Not that I'm running a brothel, but it does have, it's so (laughs) different from all of the other towns. And I thought that was the befitting name for that room. I love that. You know, yeah, there's nothing wrong with a different point of view. Exactly. And that's what's so beautiful. (laughs) Well, as we've we've been, you know, visiting so many bed and breakfasts and everyone, the next Mm. issue of Parks and Travel magazine uh, will have 21 bed and breakfasts all featured in them because we have discovered it's like a new Mm. era of B&Bs in a way. Like, yes, we've seen that. It's fresh. Um, Coming Mm. in here, you're in this historic Queen Victoria. I mean, it's like, hello, I'm here in the turret. Um, But at the same time, you've got this contemporary feel to it. It's comfortable. It's peaceful. Um, it's in this, I mean, the ultimate of charming community. I mean, this is a charming town for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, but going through the, it is such an interesting in that it actually really, you know, starting with the music makes you feel good when you step in, but you, it, 
it's not overcrowded with decor. That's important. And at the same time, you have a lot that is all different that it makes you slow down, take a breath, mm-hmm. and look and experience. And so to me, that's awesome. I love it because I love the art. I love your masks. I mm-hmm. love just the whole feel of it. And it's and I love the Halloween decor, too, because that's cool. Oh, it's so no, I, 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 I always get a thrill when I, out of it when I see guests who are just wandering around. And yeah. they're just like, oh, we're just, we, there's so much to see and it's so yes. different. And mm-hmm. there's a, yeah. there's a nod to, to countries and cities all over the world here mm-hmm. um, in different areas in every room and stuff. And, uh, you know, um, it's just, it's fun that everybody else gets to enjoy that as well now. I want I wanted to also mention because um a little hummingbird sat on my shoulder and said you're going to be in the movies. The the home is going to be in the movies. The hummingbird inn is going to be in a movie. That's that correct. True? Last weekend we were the mm-hmm. site location for a a new movie coming out on cool. Amazon Prime. It'll be coming out in the spring and it's called The Detour and it's a, a storyline based it's a romantic comedy. They say um, it seems very Hallmark storyline to me about mm-hmm. a, a young man whose father passes away and he had his father owned a, a bed and breakfast in a small town and he leaves the bed and breakfast to his son who comes to the inn and is deciding how he's going to make this work and and who he meets there and um, oh, cool. they chose Hummingbird Inn to be the inn for the movie so we were uh, cool. able to do the whole feature film shoot here over the past weekend and uh, it was very interesting and exciting to see and it'll be really fun to see the movie come out in the spring oh how That's cool awesome because it is it's a it's like a fairy tale house you know and and lastly you've got a lot of awards I mean yeah I mean it's it's you're you're new in this journey but it doesn't feel like it it feels like okay you've been in this for years you're so like smooth <laughs> smooth operator man you know so <laughs> You've already won all these awards. I know more coming down the pipeline, but um, because I just know. Because, right, Nancy, we know. Priscilla, the yes. sock monkey, knows. Well, she knows everything, yes. even yes. though she's a lush. <laughs> this but, is true. And, and you know, the well, great the Mama Babushka can already tell <laughs> that is more coming for a war after a war oh. after a war. Well, <laughs> well, well. The big reward for me is just I, I love the fact that my guests t- are so enjoying their experience here, mm-hmm. and especially um, guests like I have a guest here today, uh, this weekend, who, you know, when they come for their first B and B experience, and w- by the time they've just hit breakfast, they're like, I've totally converted me into mm-hmm. a B and B lover. You know, they're like, this is just. Awesome, and that makes me feel good. And mm-hmm. and the, the comments that people leave and everything, it's really mm-hmm. it's heartwarming for me, and it makes me feel like I'm doing what I should be doing because I'm loving it. Oh, cool. and and it shows. Well, it and shows. it shows. It does. Absolutely. It's been a real pleasure being here, and you know, check out tomorrow. It sounds really a bummer. It's always bittersweet because we meet such amazing people, stay in amazing places. <laughs> I know we're off to more, but like. What are we going to do without our Bellinis? You're like, seriously, yeah. we're porch time with you. We love our porch time with you. Are you kidding? And then true, I mean, come on. And, and you're pet friendly. That's I want to say that you're pet friendly, which is yes, also yes. very good. Yes, yes, we are dog friendly. So we do mm-hmm. allow dogs, We and we have no discrimination against breed, the size of the dog, even how many dogs you bring. The only requirement is they're just well-behaved dogs So because there are other dogs and people here. Um, but yeah, we we encourage it, and we have a great time with all the dogs hanging out on the porch at porch time, cool. or in the guest parlor when we do parlor time in the winter, and and it's it's really it adds I think to also making it feel like you're you're not in a hotel, you're at a, mm. a comfortable, relaxing home, um, and you can just enjoy it. Are you getting last question? I know because we have to go, but are you seeing a younger generation come to the end than what you would have thought like maybe it didn't travel five to ten years ago are you seeing a younger Absolutely. generation and, yeah. and business travelers too are you seeing mm-hmm. that yeah yeah yeah, yeah. definitely a, a younger generation uh, we mm-hmm. are focusing on trying to get um a, a younger group here um just to introduce them to this and i think bed and breakfast for a long time had sort of a very 
sort mm -hmm. of reclusive stigma and it really wasn't something that you would go to unless you were you know in your 90s <laughs> and exactly. uh, and so, so people true. just didn't feel like it was sounded mm -hmm. like something they'd be into and what we're trying to do is change that perception mm -hmm. um, with the events and the parties and the social aspect at the same time providing the calmness the relaxation the beauty mm -hmm. the comfort and and seeing that you can have all of this um as you travel and then the then your place where you are staying becomes part of your vacation and not just a place to you know to crash yeah, and, yeah. and that's why our, our tagline is hummingbird inn is more than just a place to sleep because we want you to feel like it's it's almost like your home and it's a it becomes part of your trip just to hang out here and enjoy oh. yourself as well as I the know. rest of the town well you know we love it here and we really appreciate the experience we appreciate meeting mm -hmm. you and true and and your friends and you know all you know it's been fun and um we're we want to play a song for you. It's called Hummingbird. Go figure. This is from our <laughs> friend uh, Wally Lauder in Tucson, where we lived. And we met him in Silver City when we were on the road. And then he moved to Tucson at the same time we did. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so it's crazy. But um, this song is from his latest album. It's called Not Enough Time, which means he probably needs to come to the Hummingbird Inn and relax. <laughs> so, uh, But it's from his latest album. It's called Hummingbird. So everyone, you can go to wallylauder.com to learn more about him. Um, but also go to hummingbirdineaston.com. Thank you so much, Eric. It's been a true pleasure. Thank you. Absolutely. It's been a pleasure for me, too. See you cool. downstairs in a little bit. <laughs> yeah, okay. Time. Sounds good. Okay. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye. She's like a hummingbird. It seems she never stops. She likes to hover. Attracted by a color. Shimmering in the sun. When we're together to be together, I like to fly with her. Hover in the sky with her It's adventurous, it's fun Sometimes she needs to rest her busy wings If only to dream of new songs to sing Sometimes I'm like a branch on a tree and she rests herself in me and then she's off again there's something fascinating always something a captivating something just around the bend like a hummingbird except that she is kinder so much kinder often I will find her reaching out to a friend Like a hummingbird 